Albert Einstein was a German-born theoretical physicist and one of the greatest minds of our time, a genius responsible for the theory of relativity and made some very important contributions to quantum mechanics, and of course introduced the world to the famous equation E equals mc squared, as well as other many contributions to science throughout his life, and quickly became a staple in popular culture, immortalising his life and work to this very day. So much so that years after his death, his name is somewhat ironically used to describe someone who is not particularly bright. Or, if that someone was to say something blindingly obvious, you might say that that person is a real Einstein. That's how much of an impression the man left on our culture. Although it's probably not the best example of how Einstein's brilliance is still to this day an inspiration to so many, especially scientists. So it may come as no surprise that when Einstein died in 1955, scientists wanted to run experiments on his brain to try and unlock the secrets of his genius by delving into the complex mechanics of the human mind. The only problem was, Einstein had forbid anybody from extracting his brain after death. He saw no point in doing so as he believed that it was a pointless thing to do and nothing useful could be discovered. Now, throughout history, it's not been uncommon for a scientist to somehow come into possession of the brain of a genius or a great thinker. After all, it's one of the organs in the body that we know very little about. Granted, we know a lot more about the brain in modern day, but there are so many more mysteries still to be unlocked. Einstein knew that when he died, scientists may want to run experiments on his brain, and he was dead against it. No pun intended. Einstein had forbid anyone from extracting his brain after death. He saw no point in doing so and he believed that it was a pointless thing to do and nothing useful could be discovered. He wished to be cremated and for his brain to remain safely inside his skull until the flames took it. And his wishes should have been respected, but unfortunately they were not. On April the 18th, 1955, Einstein passed away at Princeton Hospital, New Jersey and only a few hours after his death, the autopsy was already underway. The pathologist Thomas Harvey, who was carrying out the autopsy, discovered that Einstein died of an abdominal aortic aneurysm, and that should have been that. He had done his job, he had discovered the cause of death. However, for some strange reason, Harvey took it upon himself to remove Einstein's brain completely and take it home with him, where he would store it in a jar in a cider box in his basement. He took the brain to perform further studies, no doubt to further his own medical career, by discovering what it was that made Einstein a genius. It would seem that Einstein's last wishes didn't exactly mean much to Thomas Harvey. It was a disgusting act that he carried out against the wishes of Einstein and his family. In short, he stole the brain. Now, it wasn't long before Einstein's son actually found out about the theft of his father's brain, and to say he wasn't very happy was an understatement, but somehow Thomas Harvey managed to convince him to let him keep the brain. And Einstein's son actually did that. He let Thomas Harvey keep the brain. He gave him his blessings to do his research on his father's brain in the name of science. But he made it very clear that he did not want his father's brain on display for all to see like some freak show. The brain was eventually dissected into 240 chunks that were about one centimeter squared and then stored in little jars in his basement, preserved. It wasn't long after Thomas Harvey lost his job at Princeton Hospital and eventually his marriage although he did carry on in the medical profession working as a medical supervisor in a biological testing lab, which was in Wichita, Kansas. He then moved to Western Missouri to continue practicing medicine, all the while he made attempts to study the brain. But here's a strange thing, as if none of this is actually strange already, Thomas Harvey's expertise were only in disease of the brain. He had no other knowledge, or at least he wasn't knowledgeable enough to actually run his own tests and come up with any positive results. And in 1988, he actually lost his medical license after failing a competency exam and eventually took an assembly line job and moved into an apartment next to a gas station where apparently he would sit out on his porch and boast about having Einstein's brain in his possession and would often hand out samples to researchers and friends, such as his neighbour, who also liked to boast that he could have a piece of Einstein's brain whenever he liked. And Einstein's brain was studied. It was studied quite a bit. In short, some scientists found certain differences between the brain and the brain of an average person, but studies may have been flawed on a few levels, especially considering the brain had been dissected into so many small pieces and the method of preservation wasn't exactly the best. In short, not much was discovered from the theft of Einstein's brain and a dead man's wishes should always be respected.
Thomas Harvey had the brain in his possession for over 40 years and before he died in 2007, he actually donated the brain back to Princeton Hospital. And some of the pieces of brain are on display at the Mutter Museum of Medical History in Philadelphia, although it is said that there are many other pieces of the brain still missing to this day. And this is due to the fact that Thomas Harvey liked to hand out pieces of Einstein's brain willy-nilly to anyone he saw fit. The majority of Einstein's brain is locked up at Princeton Hospital, but there are a number of untold pieces that are still out there in the wild. Do you think that Einstein's brain should be kept under lock and key, in hope that one day science will be able to unlock the mystery of Einstein's genius? Or should his last wishes be respected, and the rest of the brain that we can find at least be cremated? As always, I'll let you decide. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you very, very soon.